Speaker. It is indeed a pleasure to follow my colleague, uh, the Minister of Immigration and Associate Minister of Health. When Bill English, uh, Mr. Speaker, finished reading the 2010 budget, which was under the theme of building the recovery, the Leader of the Opposition got to his feet uh, and moved an amendment to the motion. And I would make it very clear to the House that this side does not support that amendment to the motion. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition made the statement that he believed the Government had failed to implement a plan for jobs, lacks any vision for a, a smart, high-skilled, high-technology and high-wage economy. And, Mr Speaker, uh, that is as far from the truth as you can possibly get. To the contrary, Mr Speaker, this Government is all about creating the necessary environment to effect for this nation the step change that it needs. We need a first-class economy that will provide the citizens of New Zealand with the jobs and the careers uh, that are high-skilled, high-tech and high-wage, because that is what the hard-working citizens of New Zealand uh, deserve. That's right. In fact, when you look at the Leader of the Opposition's speech, uh, it failed to resonate with New Zealand, much the way the tired Labor government failed to resonate with the citizens of New Zealand leading up to the last general election. They lacked the inspiration uh, that the New Zealand people require. At a quick glance, um, the speech by the Leader of the Opposition failed in one very important area. It's an area, Mr Speaker, I want to take the House through because I believe that it is a centrepiece along with the tax provisions of the 2010 budget. The Leader of the Opposition failed to refer to the contribution that science uh, would be able to make. In actual fact, when you look at the speech of the Leader of the Opposition, uh, it made accusations that were unable to be substantiated, and effectively the speech itself was very much like the Labour Party before it went into opposition. It lacked fresh thinking, uh, and there was no evidence of uh, that coming. So I'd like to take the House through the uh, Budget 2010 and just how uh, it contributed enormously to taking New Zealand forward uh, in the fields of research, science and technology. It will mean enormous stuff because it's going to put the sheep industry back on the map. It will put the sheep industry back on the map. But just before we go to there, look at the budget. It contributed $321 million of new and reprioritised funding over four years. And it, it will it will contribute enormously to improvement in research. It covers all industry, including agriculture, and it is designed to lift the spending to some $750 million a year for science and R&D covering all of those industries. So added to that, Mr Speaker, there's the increased spending included around the uh, operating initiatives in research, science and technology, amounting to $40 million in the current year, uh, moving up to $64 million in the year uh, 2011 and 12, $80 million in 2012-13, and out to a whopping $82 million in 2013-2014. You know that you, the, one knows that we have got it right on this side of the House when you get a thumbs up from people uh, with, that give you third party endorsement and people who have integrity. And I refer here to Sam Robinson, the chairman of Ag Research, who was formerly also the chairman of the meat company Richmond's, somebody who would stand out uh, in the agricultural sector for their integrity uh, and their contri uh, contributions uh, and leadership. A combination of the budget day encouragement for private sector investment and a new focus of Crown Research Institutes have been greeted as a great advance in science development and a wealthier New Zealand. That's a quote from his press release. It goes on to say that Robinson said that as a farmer and citizen, he agreed largely with English's conclusions. As a director of ag research, I say that the reforms we are seeing is about making New Zealand more competitive and productive. Science is a big part of that. What a wonderful endorsement uh, of a budget from someone so eminent. New Zealand government funding for science and research has closed the gap 
between the average of OECD countries. But business funding was well below the OECD average. This budget is about fixing that, Mr Speaker. It is pretty good. I'm heartened by it. Those are comments of Sam Robinson. Robinson said he especially liked the setting up of the Rutherford Discovery Fund of $25 million over four years to encourage science, uh, science excellence and train and retain world-class scientists in New Zealand. I think that's really smart because business doesn't run without world-class science. And I'd just like to highlight to those members over there uh, that what Sam Robinson was talking about in that particular quote uh, is where New Zealand or where this budget is being directed in allowing those scientists to keep more of the smart money that they earn. Because really, uh, just as was quoted on the Sunday paper, that effectively, sorry, the rich, we need the rich more than they need us. And I think myself that that quote there highlights why, because we want to retain, we want to retain that intellectual property and those smarts. The budget confirmed $45 million worth of contribution over four years, uh, for the Global Research Alliance into Agricultural Greenhouse Gases, an initiative in which about 30 countries are involved, and it's all aimed at reducing methane emissions from farmed animals. I like this quote from, from Sam Robinson. One of the great unknowns is how the rumen works, and they are the engine room of the New Zealand economy. Some of our best scientists are trying to understand it, and you need to understand it before you can get solutions. The budget also provided additional capital funding of 6.7 million and operational funding of 14.3 million over four years to develop and improve joint border management systems. To replace aging border clearance systems run by the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Customs. And on top of that, Mr Speaker, there's another $200 million to be rolled out for ultra-fast broadband on top of the $200 million that was rolled out last year under Budget 2009. It's also wonderful to see that the Primary Growth Partnership uh, has commissioned a number of projects. Three primary sector organisations have received $20 million over the next five to seven years, and that is a relationship, Mr Speaker, between government, industry partners, that was announced in Budget 2009 uh, with the industry funding and the value of the partnership expected to exceed $45 million. What a wonderful endorsement that we see that this government is so focused on making sure that there is a step change uh, in this country's economy. I just want to finish off with a, another contribution by Merino New Zealand. The Merino New Zealand Company, the government and the Government um, Primary Growth Partnership has announced a 36 million five-year initiative designed to amplify the momentum and economic returns already, already evident in New Zealand's fine wool sector. And what does the Chairman John Nicholl acknowledge? He acknowledges the role of government. The process has been robust and at times demanding, but it has forced us to further raise the bar in our thinking regarding sector innovation here. integration right. and the particular value capture to farmers and the broader economy of New Zealand. But the comment that I really do like, that really does reinforce that Budget 2010 is squarely focused on making that step change and creating an innovative society was the comment by John Brackenridge, the CEO of Merino New Zealand, where he says he refers to the new PGP partnership as the start of the great New Zealand sheep revolution, here, here. one that will once again have the sheep as the mainstay of our economy, but in a lot more market-driven manner that, than former cliches. So, Mr Speaker, the New Zealand sheep industry will also be very proud and positive about this budget, as the rest of New Zealanders, and we've put science at the very centre. I don't have the time to keep on elaborating, but it's an absolute pleasure to speak to this budget. It is a stunner.